up here, Carl. Who wants to see my damn shoes? Welcome to this week's episode of Trevo Travels. And I am on the beautiful coast of Antrim, right here in a small town called Ballycastle. There's more to Antrim than the Giants Causeway and the Rope Bridge, and that's what Trevo Travels is all about. There's a beautiful farmer's market over there. We're gonna have a look. We're gonna see some fantastic seafood, a veg shop, that view over there, guys, is fair head. I'm told on a sunny day, you can see the coast of Scotland and apparently some lunatic who's madder than me has already swam across it. We're gonna have an absolute blast of a show, guys. I'm telling you, I'm getting excited. I'm gonna show you about a guy who sent me a tweet. We're gonna go have a look to see what he does. Nothing to do with food, but everything to do with Trevo's travels, because that's what it's all about. Follow me, Kyle. <laughs> We're up from the beach and we're right here in the beautiful farmer's market. And I love coming here, meeting people like this because the stories they have and the produce that they make is just absolutely fantastic. North Coast Smokehouse, handcrafted and delicious. Well, let's go see if it is. Let's go talk to the main man himself. Thank you very much. Rory, hi, how are you doing? You're just Paul, nice Paul, to meet you. Nice to meet you Paul. How are you on? Not too bad. You're so just in time. We've almost sold out, believe it or not. Right? Well, that's a great complaint, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. It is indeed, yeah. Brilliant. So tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do and... Well, we specialise in hot smoked salmon or smoke roasted salmon. There's quite a lot of producers of cold smoked salmon, which would be very traditional in this area. Yeah. This is a big, historically, this has been a big salmon fishery area. Although the wild salmon have now more or less kind of disappeared from the market. You can't get commercial right. quantities now. Yeah. So we get our salmon from the Glenarm organic salmon farm just down the coast, which many people would consider to be the finest farm salmon in the world. Friend, you know. a, a good organic salmon is, yeah. is as close as you're going to get to a wild yeah. salmon. And it would take a very trained eye to see the difference really, it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right. I lived in New Zealand for about 20 years where hot smoking and food is much more common. People yeah. do it in their own homes more regularly and that's where I would have sort of perfected my techniques here with the smoked roasted salmon. People often say, do you do other smoked products? The thing that I've been doing when I was living in New Zealand was making smoked sea salt. Now, how in the name of God do you smoke salt? For the smoked salt, uh, basically you just put it on a tray, yeah. put it in a cold smoker, and we basically just infuse it with uh, beach smoke. We fill the chamber with smoke, and over the course of several hours, the smoke uh, settles on the salt, and it, just, it picks up the smoky flavor. Well. Now, I have so, a very simple thing about quality of salt. Good quality salt does not taste salty. And I'm gonna, gonna well, try a bit good, of this. Good quality smoke doesn't taste like an ice yeah. tray either. You know, <laughs> I, so. I like it, I like it. <laughs> so, so look at this. That looks like a lot of salt, guys. But, you know, you gotta put your money where your mouth is, or you gotta put Rory salt where your mouth is. Wow, you can get such intense, you can really get the smoke out of that. Yeah, that's right. And are you, would you be like a big operation or are you no, a one-man band? No, no, one-man band. Yeah. Uh, well, myself and my wife. Right. Uh, Two-person be band. We, yeah. we better say, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't forget the wife. <laughs> Nice Hi, to meet I'm you. Shay. Shay, how are you? Not bad. Tell us what you got going on here, Shay. Uh, well, we've got a sort of mixture of uh, all our homemade pestos, tapenades, hummus. Fantastic. And you do all these pestos, all the dips? Yeah, yeah, handmade everything. Yourselves? Everything you see, um, the pestos, dips, is all handmade, so we make them all with stick blenders to our own recipe. You know, we've got maybe five, ten different varietal types of hummus. I'm going to try a bit of cracker here. Go ahead. So this is the, the, the hummus there, is that's it? That's our main, that's our key line. That's, yeah. That's our number one seller. Um, this is your baby, this is all your prayer. That's the baby, that's yeah. uh, probably mega uh, 50, oh. 60 kilo of that. Oh wow, every week. I can see why. Yeah. That's amazing. Absolutely beautiful. Well, I'm thinking of maybe taking just a little bit of a sample. If I have a little look around, would you yeah. be able to throw maybe a few olives, one or two of the dips and just a small little container or something? Absolutely, not a Very problem good. at all. We'll have a little wander around. I tell you, it's a this is the kind of stuff I love, guys. This, I could stay here all day and actually I just might. But this is the kind of stuff that I love and I'm looking forward to trying it later on. Especially those sun-dried tomatoes, they look amazing. Yeah. You're a gentleman. Not a problem. Thank you very much. You. We'll see you later on. Yeah, Take okay, care. All the best. anything that's happening every single are you seeing how much these guys love what they're doing every single person we have it's unique it's family it's it's like they're doing it themselves you don't get this on an industrial scale but you do get it in family businesses and look what he got next to flossie's fudge let's have a look at what flossie's fudge is all about how are you doing how are you doing how's things very good well i mean you've got an incredible selection here so tell me about 
where the idea came from, okay. how you made fudge, what you do. Okay, well Flossie's Fudge was actually started by my daughter when she was 16. Wow. And the name Flossie was her nickname, so okay. that's where we got it from. And what makes Flossie's different to the other fudge is it's all made with fresh dairy ingredients and it's all real food. It's not flavourings or essences or whatever. Brilliant. So this one here are lightly malted is the only confectionery product in Northern Ireland to have ever got three stars in the Great Taste Awards. Wow, congratulations. It has all that in it. Now, I always ask somebody when they tell me they've got awards, have you anything to back yourself up with your awards? Mm -hmm. I see a lovely little plaque here. Well, this is the Great Taste Awards certificate, and then just on Friday night past there, we won the Taste of the Northwest Award. Wow, so well we're really done. pleased with that. So you're yeah. pretty much telling me this is the best fudge you can get anywhere. Best fudge in anywhere. The, I like it, I love it. I love somebody. I love somebody with a bit of confidence that's not afraid to turn around and say, do you know, it's a bit like me, do you know what? I'm actually the best at what I do. It's brilliant, I love it. Fantastic, and business is going well? Business is going really well. And yeah. tell me this now, Flossie herself. Flossie herself went off to university to study English, so she's buried in books. Buried in books. But she comes back and gives a hand every now and again. And is she on a good commission? Uh, well, <laughs> she keeps telling me when I make my first million, she'll come in for a cut then. Very good, well I tell you what, don't tell her when you make the first, but tell her when you make the second. Okay. <laughs> I love it. It's a brilliant story and it's a fantastic product. Thank you very Thanks much. Well, See you later on. How are we doing, sir? How are you doing? How are you? I'm good, thank you very you much. You sold out of a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, we're down to yeah. our last few. Very few good. Well, what have we got going on here? So, we've got some of our white loaves, our linseed and rye loaves, our wholemeal loaves, and a couple of slices of focaccia there. So, um, all our bread's 100% organic. Now give me a very quick line because organic is something we're hearing every day. Yep. What does organic mean? No chemicals, basically. Fantastic. Uh, our bread takes as long as it's supposed to. So our sourdough, for example, will be 36, 48 hours to make from scratch. We let the bread do what it's supposed to do, the flour and water. Naturally. The way it should. Absolutely. Yeah, so no additives, no accelerators. All our flours, it's not bleached. It's all, all the way it should be. Just mm -hmm. milled, stone ground. Fresh flour. And where, where are you based? Uh, we're based in Ballycastle here. Right here in Ballycastle? Um, yeah, just yeah. here. So we actually, based out of our home, we're at the post process of now moving to a larger scale. So we have a small, because, small scale bakery. Because business is getting so good. It's been great. Yeah, Fantastic. we come to the markets. We normally last about 45 minutes yeah. and then we're done. That's we have a queue of people and we're, we're away home. Carl, so, yeah. Bring that over to me. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to actually have your job done in 45 minutes and say, I'm sold out, good luck, put the feet up. Is that how it works? It. Well, unfortunately, there's a lot goes <laughs> there's on, a lot behind. on behind the scenes. But when we oh, come here it. 45 minutes or yeah. away home, we go lie down again. Fantastic. So, so we've got a beautiful here. focaccia here. Yeah, feel free to sample. Yeah. We've got some oatmeal and honey here. Why don't we so. try the oatmeal, so? Sure. So that's made with oat, like a porridge and then yeah. added into the bread. So wow. nice and fresh. And it's lovely, lovely texture on it as well. Hey. I'm actually, I'm spoiled for choice. I, I don't need to eat lunch or dinner at all today. This is fantastic. So listen, Things are going well, which is the main thing. It's a it's a great business. It's like you said, it's organic, it's natural. Nothing added into it. Nothing. Well, flour, yes. water, salt, and the yeast of some form, either sourdough culture or fresh yeast. Fantastic. The way, the way bread should be. Should be. Exactly. Absolutely. I love it. Well, continue success. Thank you very I'm much. delighted I came to a store that has pretty much nothing left. That just shows you how good it was. But we'll be back again. Fair play to you. Thanks, Thanks a million. Thanks Let's well. go on. Guys, I think we've taken in pretty much as many stalls here as we can in the time we can do it, but it's a reoccurring trend. Everybody's like, you know what I love about it? It's like family run business. It could be just somebody at home who's just doing something and it's brilliant to see. There's so much more to see in Ballycastle, so much more to see in Antrim. And I'm gonna show you just another few ideas of what's around the town here. So let's go, Cal, and see what else we can see. How much fun was that down with the traders in Ballycastle? Right on the beach, stunning. But the guys in the hotel, the Marine Hotel, right in the heart of the town said, go up and see this beautiful little fruit and veg market that's up here. So we said, we'll kill two birds with one stone, check out the town, check out the fruit and veg guy, pick up a few ingredients and make a great dish for you. So let's go in and have a look, see what we got. in a candy shop when Trevo walks into a market like this. So let's have a look. I have no idea what I'm gonna do, by the way. Still need to get a little piece of seafood. So let's do a stir fry. Stir fries are quick and simple. Look at that beautiful red pepper. Uh, what else we got going on here? Yeah, lovely and fresh courgettes. Spring onions. They cook really quickly in a pan. Uh, always take a lemon, guys. Salt, pepper, lemon, I tell you a thousand times. Brilliant way to season your food. Sometimes they're called flat cap mushrooms but uh, we'll take them as well. 
a lovely bit of mange too. Um, I'm running out of space in my hands, but sweet corn goes really well. I'll tell you what, guys, like, you could come up with a thousand different recipes here. What's this? Local dulce. Now, Ballycastle dulce. I'll tell you what, guys. I know I pretend like I know what I'm on about all the time, but I've actually never really cooked or tried seaweed, but I've heard so much about this that it's a local delicacy. You can cook with it, you can eat it raw. So I think we've got enough here to get going with some sort of a dish, guys. Let's get it, let's get out of here, let's get our seafood and let's get cooking. Guys, welcome back to part two of Trevo Travels in the beautiful county of Antrim. And there's no way you can come here without taking in one of the most iconic locations on possibly one of nah, the second best TV show ever, Game of Thrones. But at breakfast time this morning in the hotel, one of the crew just casually throws out, ooh, by the way, I was an extra in Game of Thrones. Actually, let's break all the rules. Dean, get in here. Check out this bad boy. Dean, tell the guys what you did. I don't think you would have heard of it, but I was Wilding Male 74. <laughs> Wilding Male 74. Yeah. Dean, I love it. Go pack the cameras. We're going to head back into town. We're going to pick up our ingredients and we're going to cook ourselves an absolute treat. Check out the dark hedges. <laughs> Guys, here I am down in Ballycastle Marina, and I've heard Patrick is the best fisherman right here in Ballycastle. So what I want to see is a truth or is it a myth? So let's go have a look to see what he's got. Hey Patrick, how are we doing? Oh, how are we? Very how good. Are How's things? Lovely day. Very good. What a what a bounty you've had for coming up with. Yeah, it's very good today. What have we got here? Happy enough. Uh, a few lobster. Beautiful. A few edible crab. These are like and the brown crab, is it? The brown crab, yep. Um, Few scallops. All male. All male, yeah, they're all the caught crab. And, yep. and you can tell that by the, the purse there. The size of the purse. It's nice and narrow for the male. Yep. And it'll be a lot broader for the female. Broader for they right. carry the eggs. Now, look how brave Trevo is, huh? No, don't worry. I'm with a pro here. <laughs> Why am I daft enough to do that, Patrick? What do the fishermen normally do? There's a wee member in there. Yeah. The fishermen nick that. Okay. And that takes the strength from the claw, then they can't put pressure on. All right. And you were does years ago what did they used to do? Years ago they'd have broke the tip off the leg yeah they held the claw closed and they actually pushed it under the top like Just a wee wedge there. to stop them lifting that's the fantastic and we got a couple of uh, scallops good you've got a great bounty a few scallops there there's not just so many of them yeah and uh as i say the few lobster this is fantastic. i'm always afraid picking up a lobster in case he decides well, to it's ace to just dice it flick the tail flick the tail you know <laughs> fantastic again that was the most popular size for selling locally you know yeah I tell you what, I'm, I'm looking at here. Uh, unfortunately, the budget doesn't stretch to lobster, <laughs> but I might take a few scallops off you. I'm thinking of doing a little stir fry dish. We already got a little bit of vegetables in from one of the shops up above in the town. Yeah. Stunning. So a little stir fry and maybe pan fry off a couple of scallops, nice and quick. Sounds That's nice and sweet. No problem at Very all. Good. So you don't mind if I take a couple of scallops no, off you? No, we'll, You're get a you, we'll get you sorted. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm, Look at the size of this, guys. You can't. Look at the size of those claws. A bit of garlic butter. Oh, my God. A classic example of when a director says, I have a great idea. Let's cook on a boat. So here we are cooking on our boat, wind coming in, Patrick was so sound to put us on the actual boat that he goes out fishing with, and we said, well, let's do the dish and put everything together. And guys, we're gonna go quickly, because we're doing a stir fry. So stir fry, key to it, always have it ready before you get going. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit of the pepper that we got, and cut everything nice and fine, okay? We call it a julienne, if you're really that much worried about it. That's plenty of pepper there. Then we're gonna get the beautiful spring onions that we got earlier on, guys. And again, just nice and fine julienne, a little bit on an angle. So we get the texture and we get the flavor and we get everything going. Now, let's throw this in, get things started. And all I have in there, lads, a little bit of walnut oil and a little bit of butter. That's it, plain and simple. Our button mushrooms. And we just cut it nice and fine again. And lads, look, I tell you every single time, don't get caught up on recipes if you don't get these 
portobello mushrooms, use the button mushrooms, use something else. Use your brain, that's what I want you to use. A little bit of courgette. So we just do a little dice. And again, pretty much the same shape as we have the peppers. Keep everything the same, everything, everything, everything the same. Now when you're cooking this, guys, I want you to have it done beforehand, okay? So that it's nice and simple. Have all this prepped for you in advance. Now, we have got our lovely mange tout. Mange tout in French means eat everything. So we don't need to worry about string or anything on the bean. That's not you who's had a glass or two too much, by the way. That's, that's me on the boat. That's rocking with the waves. <laughs> rocking with Trevo, huh? Now, oh yeah, a little bit of the old baby corn that we got, nearly forgot that. And again, just pop it all in. Now, beautiful, where are we going? Just gonna push that around a little bit. And you can see and hear the sizzle. I'm gonna leave that saute off for a second. A little bit of rock salt, guys, you know. Beautiful. A little bit of the crack of the black pepper. Now, fantastic. So let's talk about the scallops that we got off Patrick, okay? Scallops, the king scallops. And we're just gonna open one up here. So you basically push your knife in underneath on the flat side of the shell. Keep it all nice and flat. And pop her open like so. That goes back out to the sea where it came from. And we want to clean it all up. You see all this kind of stuff here? We want to take all that off so that it's all nice and trim. So get your knife in underneath. and You can use a spoon as well. And just scrape it all out. Beautiful. And you see most of it's coming off with us already. Pull it all off. Get rid of all the guts. Keep the coral, keep that orange bit on it, guys. That's all flavor. And we want to make sure we cook with that. And these are so fresh, guys. It's just, it's insane how good they are. Pull it all off. One beautiful clean scallop, one beautiful dirty hands. So give them an old clean and a wipe. And I'm gonna show you just how fresh these scallops are. And that's why I want you down in your local fishmonger supporting them, because you won't get fresher than this. We get a nice little slice like that. Oh my God. It's like sushi, absolutely beautiful. So we are cracking along nicely. And I'm gonna put in a little bit of the the Ballycastle Dulce, just to see. They're all ranting and raving about this. So let's put in a little bit of seaweed. I'm told you can eat it raw. I'm told you can just put it in the frying pan. Apparently deep fried, it makes fantastic seaweed crisps. So let's just throw it all in. It is quite salty, so we're gonna counteract that a little bit with mirin, a little bit of Japanese rice wine vinegar. So it's, a little, it's quite sharp, so we wanna offset the saltiness. Beautiful, absolutely fantastic. Now, the director always says, would you do something chefy?" So, okay, let's flip it all over so you can get a nice little shot of that. And you'd be amazed how quickly the stir fries take. I'm also gonna throw in a little bit of oyster sauce into the frying pan at the very end, okay? So we're nearly there. We're gonna swap pans and we're gonna get our scallops going. Huh? Say hello to my little boys, huh? Playing an absolute blinder. Now, with scallops, they're literally about a minute each side, depending on the size. And these guys, they're a little bit smaller than the normal ones. So we're only gonna take maybe say about 45 seconds to a minute. Get your pan red hot. That is the key to it, okay? And we're also gonna throw in a little bit of butter into it. Simple little bit of rock salt, a little bit of pepper. And I'm also gonna dice up just a little bit more of the seaweed to kind of make like a seaweed butter as our sauce. So this is gonna be fantastic. So it is very dry, guys, but it softens down. And that's all we need. Just enough for just a little bit of color. Now, shh, you haven't moved yet. Don't start moving now. That's exactly what we are looking for. And make sure the pan is red hot. So we're nearly there. So what I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna pop in my little bit of oyster sauce. And then with a stir fry of veg, guys, you want it to be nice and crunchy, okay? Don't cook the crap out of it and all of a sudden it's all soft. You want it crunchy so you know it's good fresh veg. So oyster sauce, you can get this anywhere, about a half a tablespoon max. It's just to give it that 
real subtle flavor. I keep telling you, don't kill your ingredients with overpowering them with other kind of stuff because it just, it just ruins it. What's the point in putting in lovely courgettes, peppers, carrots, anything that you put in, if all of a sudden you kill it with too much oyster sauce? Where is my wooden spoon? Beautiful. I have to admit, I keep saying somebody please invent Smelly Vision because this is fantastic. Put your hand on it. Okay, you want to get it really, really red hot. It's smoking, so we know we are good. So in we go with our scallops, guys. If you don't get that sizzle, your pan is not hot enough. Lovely, absolutely beautiful. Quick wash. And now, very, very simple. A little bit of rock salt. Not too much. A little bit of our peppercorns. And the sun is beginning to come out here in the beautiful marine and the harbour of Ballycastle. That's, trust me, this is an absolute stunning location to come to away for a weekend or away for a little break. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna pop that down there now. And like I said, guys, these do not take long at all. We're nearly done already. You can see the color on them here, guys. That's the natural sugars in the scallops, the natural caramelization, exactly what we are looking for. Fantastic. Now, my butter, because our scallops are pretty much done. Just a knob of butter. You know me now with this stage, guys. That's to get our flavor in. It's at this stage. I'm gonna throw in my last little bit of dull seaweed. We've seasoned the other side of it. Give them a nice little flick. In the ideal world, I'd have flambe them with just a little bit of brandy. But that, look at the color now. Look at the beautiful, the butter that you've made from the seaweed. And this is done. How long is this? this is real time cooking, guys. No, look at one I cooked earlier. This is real time cooking. So let's turn off our heat on this. And let's get ready to plate up. Grab my dish over here. You see, cooking on a boat. Oh yeah, where are we gonna put this? So let's get our lovely stir fry right into the middle. Presentation, presentation, presentation. Cooking on a boat, two frying pans, a little mini camper heater. How easy is this to do at home if I'm doing it like this? Absolutely fantastic. Now, let's go with our scallops. Just put them around the plate. This looks fantastic. A dish cooked in minutes right in front of your very eyes. We're using Ballycastle scallops. Patrick was telling me they're just caught about a mile or two offshore here. We've got the beautiful Dolce butter. Now, bring all the seaweed into it. And let's just put a little bit of our butter. Try and coat every single scallop with it. Absolutely fantastic. We have to say, guys, I thought it was crazy cooking on a boat, but look what we've just after creating in literally minutes. Stir fry a veg that we got up in the town, the scallops that are about a mile away, the dogs which is right here from the town of Ballycastle. And there's nothing else to do but just to tuck in and try it. Well guys, I hope you really enjoyed today's episode of Travo Travels. I'm having an absolute blast on this. I'm really falling in love with Northern Ireland. I absolutely had a blast in Antrim and particularly right here in Ballycastle, an absolute stunning town. And when you think about it, I know we all want to go on our sun holidays for a week or two weeks, but if you're lucky enough to be able to get away for a little break, I think we should be really supporting our own country. Never mind hanging around an airport for three or four hours and only being allowed to bring a couple of items of clothing and stuff. Chuck everything into your car. Come to somewhere like Antrim, come to somewhere like Ballycastle and support these local towns. Because I tell you what guys, it's stunning. We don't need to go a million miles away. It's right here on our own doorstep. And that's what Trevo Travels is all about. And when you come back next week guys, I've got another absolute gem of a place to bring you to. And I'm telling you what guys, I think you're gonna start falling in love with this as well, just as much as I am. So see you all next week for another cracking episode of Trevo Travels. <laughs>